wish to go over the facts with you one more time. The sound you've just heard is the sound of dreaded fear. Fear of mutilation. Fear of being ravaged. Worse yet, fear of the imminent disfigurement of a young child. A mother. A grandmother sleeping sweetly, and you would think, safely upon her porch. Not aware that lurking ever closer is the very beast that in one overpowering moment would rip her limb from limb. This beast's name was Jet. A beast set loose to wander the innocent streets in search of prey. Yes, this beast is a trained killer. Trained to ignore the screams of pain from its victims as it increases its rabid grip around the poor creature's throat till it dies, suffocated in its own blood. My client should be commended, no, still publicly applauded for performing a civil duty at immense personal risk. A risk in taking on this vermin with only a small shotgun and raw courage, protecting what, as it states in the Constitution, was rightfully his to do so. He faced an enemy more trained and calculating than anyone has. A hell hound, prowling solely on the instincts instilled in it from thousands of years of murder in its bloodline. My client acted solely in self-defense, solely out of love for his family, and did what any one of you would have done. He bounded outside, stared the killer right in its beady eyes, its muscle back hunched over and ready to pounce, its giant claws lashing at his face. My line destroyed the beast with three or four shots to its immense torso, rendering the killer unable to proceed with its premeditated rape. I see before me many younger women, and I hope you realize the gratitude which you now owe my client as you walk the streets alone at night, safe and away from the hideous gnawing and ripping and tearing of flesh from your limbs from the mindless attack of his killing sheep. I know, I know you're asking yourselves who, who would bring an assassin like this into your community to terrorize you? What evil pleasures can a man like that derive from the sight of his trained slaughtering machine, returning proudly to his property, the destroyed torso of an elderly grandmother hanging limply from its razor-sharp jaws? Is this the man you want walking among you? He smiles, making nice gestures to your children, invites you over for no reason, just for a chat, you may say. A cold, hearted, mentally ill person of the lowest moral fiber is the only way I can describe him. And where is this man? Well, take a good look at him. Burn his image in your minds. Where is he? There. There he is. This man has dragged my client into this courtroom to extract monies from him. For what? I will tell you so he can go right out and buy another monster, probably bigger and more fearsome than the last. And who would you see laughing at your tragic loss? <clears throat> That's all I have to say, ladies and gentlemen. And please, do not hesitate to thank my client, or you may rightly say, hero, any time you see him on the streets. You killed my dog, Jim! You always said you was gonna kill him! And even so, I just looked at you! Oh, this you murder you! This outburst of abuse towards my client is exactly what we must stop. And you, the jury, have the power to remove this demented gamekeeper from your streets. I only did what was my right. I was protecting my family. Gentlemen of the jury, the best friend a man has in the world may turn against him and become his enemy. His son and his daughter that he raised with love and care may prove ungrateful. 
those nearest and dearest to us, those that we trust with our happiness and our good name, may become traitors to the faith. Yeah. Those people, don't know. They just don't know. The people who are, are prone to fall on their knees and praise us, honor us, when wealth is with us and success, may be the first to cast a stone of, of malice when the, the clouds of failure have settled above our heads. But the one only unselfish friend a man may have in this selfish world, one who does not desert, one who never proves ungrateful or treacherous, is his dog. A man's dog will stay by you in prosperity or poverty, health or sickness. He will sleep on the cold, cold ground where the wintry winds blow and the snow dries fiercely if only to be by his master's side. He will lick the hand that has no food to offer. He will kiss and lick the wounds and sores from the encounters with the harsh world. He will guard his master's sleep like he was a prince. And when all else has gone wrong, the people have abandoned him, he remains. The riches have flown, the reputation has fallen to pieces, he remains as constant in love as the sun's journey through the heavens. And if fortune moves master forward, an outcast in the world, Friendless, homeless, all the faithful dog asks us to, to remain by his side, to, to guard him against his enemies. When that last final scene comes, and death is taken his master in its embrace, and his body is laid away in a cold, cold ground. And all other friends have gone their way. There, by the graveside, the noble dog will be found. His head between his paws. His eyes sad, but alert. And watching us. Faithful and true, even in death. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, at this time, I would like to present you with Jack. <laughs>